since I've been in business. There is a stretch of like absolutely terrible bad luck. Everything was going wrong. Sometimes a career change is exactly what you need to spark the passion with inside you. And that's exactly what our guest Dylan did today. From over the road trucking to becoming a solopreneur with his excavation business. Stay tuned to hear all about his story, his journey, and the little tips and tricks he's learned along the way. I'm your host, Ryan Deemer, and you're listening to another episode of the Skid Steer Nation podcast. This podcast is brought to you by none other than Skid Steer Nation, your home for high quality American made skid steer attachments. Head over to skidsteernation.com to find the next tool to increase your profit margins and save your time. It's also brought to you by Groundbreaking Growth. Groundbreaking Growth is our coaching and consulting arm of the business, and we work with small business owners like yourself out there listening to help you structure and grow your excavation business. We do not work with companies all over the board. We simply work with excavation companies. We know what works. We know how to help you structure, streamline, buy back your time, and grow your business. So if you're interested and want to learn more, head over to groundbreakinggrowth.com. So Dylan Huckabee, and you're correct. I never would have pronounced it right. It's spelled H-U-C-K-E-B-A and pronounced Huckabee. Um, Lone Star Land Management down in Lumberton, Texas, man. Thank you so much for joining us on the show and, and coming on. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, we do a lot of shipping with Skids to Your Nation. So when I saw that you were a previous driver for Old Dominion Freight, I was like, oh, it's going to be intriguing to hear how, because drivers get paid pretty well. I mean, your schedule might suck a little bit from time to time, but salary wise, it's got to be hard to walk away from that to go start your own venture. So I was intrigued to hear that part of your journey. Yeah, for sure. So the biggest hang up on leaving was benefits. That was the number one hang up on on, re, on leaving. But I, I got my commercial driver's license when I was 21 years old. And uh, I went straight to work. My dad was like, if you're not going to go to college, you need to get your CDL. And so that's, that's what I did. And uh, my dad's done it forever since he was 19 years old. And apparently he still loves it because he's still doing it. And he's up almost in his 60s now. So he, uh, he loves it. So I said, all right, I'll do it. So I did it for, you know, I did it for a couple of different companies and, uh, I finally made the switch to old dominion, uh, I guess back in 2015, I guess it was, yeah, 2015. And I was there until 2022. And, uh, I, I, I didn't want to leave the company as, you know, as the good, the company was great. Awesome company. Uh, but the job was just, I was tired of doing the same job over and over and over again. And I told my wife when I was, I don't know, I was, I guess I was about 26, 27 years old. I was like, I want to do something before I'm 30. I want to do something completely different. I want to get out of a truck. I don't want to be doing this at all. By the time I'm 30, I had no idea I wanted to own my own business because I've never even hopped in a piece of equipment at all until, uh, I guess the end of 2021. And, uh, so I made the switch and I love it. So I'm glad I did. Yeah, that's so cool. I feel like too many people out there and I'm assuming, I assume most of our listeners are not in this category because I'm assuming a high percentage of our listeners own a business, but too many people get comfortable with a paycheck and then the fear of losing that stability hinders them from taking the jump even if it's a side hustle or a passion project, or for your instance, starting a business, I just feel like we're meant for so much more than building other people's dreams. And it's really hard to, to that hurdle looks enormous from this side of the fence. But once you get over it and you turn around and look back, like, Oh, it really wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. It was scary for sure because I do have a, a wife and a daughter and uh, the benefits part of it and the steady paycheck was, was, the biggest part of switching that was that was hard and i didn't know that excavation and any kind of land work would be the the switch to make and it just so happened to like kind of i guess fall on it (laughs) how did you fall into it like of all the things like what made you say this is what i'm going to do okay so in 2020 of course covid happened my wife was an rn and uh she finally had hit a breaking point and she said i I hate this. I can't stand this career path. Uh, I can't do it anymore. And I said, okay, well, (laughs) 
if you quit your job, we only have one income and we can get by with the house we own, but it's going to be kind of hard, kind of tough and tight. And I said, why don't we just sell our property? So we sold our house and uh, we decided to take over her grandparents' property. Her, her grandpa, our grandma had already passed away. Grandpa was still alive at the time. And uh, he was, he was thrilled. He was thrilled that we take over his property. So we, it's about an hour North of where we live. And uh, I said, all right, let's, let's do it. It's 15 acres. So I went from quarter acre with an HOA <laughs> in a neighborhood and I moved up to 15 acres and it's uh, half a mile from a boat launch at the lake. So I was like, Man, this is awesome. And uh, so we switched up there and I said, all right, we're going to build a house. We're going to build a barn and minimum. I'm going to try to do everything myself uh, besides the, the build of the barn and minimum. And uh, so I had somebody come out there and quote me to do a house path. And uh, he, he came out there, gave me a pretty good quote. And I said, okay, let's start. So he was there. Once they started, he was there for I don't know, a little over a week or so because there was a lot more to do than anticipated. And uh, he left on Friday evening. And uh, he's like, hey, man, keys are in the skid steer. Keys are in the excavator. Hop in this weekend. Do whatever you want. And I was like, sweet. I've never hopped in one in my life. And uh, so I had a little bit of clearing I wanted to do at my house. So I was like, all right, let's let's do that. So I hopped in there and I was like, man, this is fun. I don't know if this is what I want to do for my career, but this is fun. And uh, I ended up breaking his excavator <laughs> on the very next day. So I, all I did was I first time ever in an excavator. And uh, I swung around and, and smacked the side of a tree and broke the, with the thumb. And, uh, dude, I, it's not a phone call I wanted to make to tell him, hey, I broke your excavator. And uh, I did. I, you know, I fixed it. I paid for it and uh and all that but um i was like man this is this might be something i want to do not repairing the equipment that wasn't that fun but this might be something i want to do as far as a career and uh I, we had moved up there i, I bought a I bought a, a little old tractor like a little i say old tractor it was a brand new tractor i bought a 21 horse bobcat tractor and it was a subcompact just a little bit bigger than a riding lawn mower had a front end loader had a box blade and I had about 300 foot of driveway. And uh, so he built the house pad. I was in the machine and I was like, man, this is cool. And then I had to build my own driveway afterwards. And uh, I was building my own driveway and I was like, I really like this. This is this is a lot of fun. And uh, so I built 300 foot driveway with a 21 horse tractor. I had four belly dump loads dumped at the very back of the driveway. So yeah. I had to go back and forth all day. It took <clears throat> what it took better part of a week because i'd get home from work and i had an hour commute to work because we moved up there and i'd get home and i'd i'd go do that in the evening and uh i said man this is this is so much fun so that's kind of how i i wanted that's when i figured let me see what i can do with this so i just started on facebook marketplace throwing ads out there as far as gravel driveway construction which a lot of them got kicked back because it's a service it's not a a product i'm selling so it was kind of hard to get that out there and then I said, um, you know, we got to we got to run the water line from the from the road to the house. So I rented an excavator a few months later. I guess this was in uh, January. And uh, I said, OK, let me rent the excavator, rent an excavator for the weekend, dug the water line, which looked terrible. I had no idea what I was doing. And our frost line here in Texas, I don't know what the frost. I know it's like maybe eight inches, maybe like we, there's no such thing as frost here. and. Uh, I dug that thing like three foot deep and it was, I mean, it was weighty. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. And, uh, I let my wife hop in there. She did it. She probably did a better job than I did for that 10 minutes. She was digging a trench. And then, uh, the next day I went out and I, I cleared about a quarter acre of some pine trees, some small pine trees. And I was like, man, this is awesome. I love this. This is so much fun. So that's kind of what I, when I thought about it and I was like, you know what, maybe I should buy an excavator. I already have the, the tractor per se. And, uh, I said, let's, let's try to start something like this. So I went ahead and I bought an excavator, bought a Bobcat E26, which is way too small for what I was wanting to do with it. And I, I had that, and that was in February of 2022. And I had that until February this year. So I had it for two years and uh, I was long overdue for an upgrade. <laughs> so that's so kind of how I got started. I'm curious with hindsight, do you feel like buying the excavator was the smart decision or do you wish you would went with a skid steer first? I probably should have went with a skid steer. And I, honestly, I still to this day don't own a skid steer. I'm still 
working up to that point. Uh, but I still have, I should have bought a skid steer from the beginning because I didn't know which way my business was going to go when I bought the excavator. I just thought I want to do land clearing. And of course I was completely clueless. So I bought an E26 Bobcat, which is <laughs> not for land clearing. And, uh, I did a little bit of, br- I also bought a brush, uh, brush attachment for it. And, uh, that was definitely way too big for that thing, but it, it did the job. It did the job, but, uh, I ended up selling that cause I didn't really use it as much as I thought I would. And, uh, I still have, I've upgraded tractors. I've upgraded, upgraded tractors twice now. I actually have a cab tractor and, uh, now I have a, a bigger excavator. I I'll tell you what, so. I'll tell you what, just from listening to guys over the years and like being a part of the industry for as long as I have, I feel like the tractor gets overlooked by so many business owners. It's such a versatile piece of attachment for so many jobs. And the cost of the hourly cost of operating that is a fraction of an excavator or skid steer. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. For sure. And so I have a, I have a 40 horse tractor now. It's, it's, it's not a big tractor by all means, but it's got a cab and AC, which is a must have down here uh, in Texas. So I wanted something a little bit more power than I had. I, I had a 21 horse and I've jumped up to a 25 horse. And then I saw real quick, I wanted some air conditioning. So then I jumped up to a 40 horse cab and uh, I do all my driveways with this, this tractor. And I, I still to this day do it. And I'm not sure how I would do it with a skid steer. I've done driveways with skid steer, but I cannot grade with a skid steer to save my life. Of course, every time I run a skid steer, it's just a bucket. Right. And I can't grade with a bucket to save my life. So I'll, I'll hop on the tractor and I can grade a driveway. Awesome. With a box blade, but I cannot do it with a bucket on a skid steer. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. You just need the right tool for the job, man. Um, yeah. I'm going to do a selfless plug here, but the, but the four blade grader attachments under the grader tab and skid steer nation, we would let my 13 year old nephew run the skid steer and grade because you can't mess it up with it. And, and the, and the product finishes looks amazing because the material just flows through it. Unlike a box blade where you capture it, this just flows mm-hmm. through the entire grader. So it keeps mixing the material. It lays it out smooth and flat. You can, you can angle the blades to, to make a crown. Um, but like, again, it's, I used to say it all the time. It's so easy. A 13 year old can use it and give yeah. you great results. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's awesome. My, my box blade, I have the hydraulic top link on it. So I can yeah. tilt it forward and backwards. And once you have that figured out, man, it's so easy to grade. You can just those smallest bit of adjustments as you're grading. It just makes the world a difference. So I'll, I'll tell you what we took the, cause I, I, I ran the company for 10 years that makes that four blade grader. We actually prototyped and we looked at getting a patent. So I'm, I'm, I'm hesitant to go too deep on this, but we actually <laughs> made an attachment that bolted to do a box blade that added a second cutting edge to the back of it. And I'll tell you what, man, you talk about uh, an easy, easy grading with a tractor. Like we let a couple guys borrow it and we had to fight to get it back. Like, and it was, <laughs> it was, I mean, it was, but it was pretty awesome just by, you know, adding a little extra cutting to the back of a box blade. Cause then you still have that same flow over cause it wasn't c- capturing it. Yeah. yeah and that's um, awesome. it was pretty cool. And then you know, we talked about doing a triangle design so we could put a, like almost maintain that back blade for back pushing too. And, but it just kind of the patent attorney we were working with ended up taking a job with John Deere corporate. And then we just kind of lost steam at that point. So yeah, anyway, that makes back, sense. Yeah. back to the real reason we're here, man, Dylan, your story. So, yeah. so you've been doing, you've been yeah. doing this now for two and a half years. Yep. Just about. Yep. When did you quit old dominion? Did you quit day one or did you go work for quite a while and then make the leap? So I, we were living an hour away and for one, I was getting burnt out on making that drive every morning. And, uh, I burn out on that quick because I drive there and then I drive all day and then I drive home. It was a Monday through Friday job. I didn't drive over the week, but, uh, I was tired of that. And, uh, the switch was, I'm, I'm sorry. I got distracted. I forgot the question. I'm sorry. <laughs> what, did you leave old dominion? Like you're like, I'm going to quit and start this excavation business. I've got the tractor and we're going to buy an excavator. Or did you actually get that equipment, work nights and weekends for a while, get some income and some name recognition, and then make the transition to full-time? Gotcha. So I, I I got the tractor, and then I bought the excavator, and then I was like, all right, now I need to start an LLC. I need to get started. So uh, I bought the bought the excavator, and then I went from, uh, from just doing it on the weekends. And uh, I kind of – I started my Facebook page. 
started doing it on the weekends. And then uh, from there, it didn't really take off so much, but I was getting steady work. And uh, I was driving back and forth to work and I was working the weekends and that was really tough. So there was one where I was, I, I just got a speed. I hadn't pulled over. I hadn't been pulled over in seven years. I got a speeding ticket and uh, that speeding ticket is what kind of was like, uh Oh, cause it was for 17 over the speed limit sign came out of nowhere. That speed limit sign came up with a ticket. The guy wrote me a, a ticket for 15 miles over. And I was like, man, I'm still going to lose my job over this because I have to report it. And even though it's in my personal vehicle, I'm still going to lose my job. And they, he's like, man, sorry. And I was like, I mean, it is my fault, but whatever. So I called the next day or whatever the, the city. And I said, Hey, um, I got this ticket. Is there any way I can have it? You know, dismissed or maybe lower down to you know, nine miles an hour because i want to say it was 10 to 15 miles an hour over even in your personal vehicle you could still lose your job and uh and i was like man so they said you can pay it but don't get a ticket for the next 90 days and this one won't show up on your record and i was like cool so i was like all right well then i'm not going to tell them about this ticket i got because it's not going to go on the record well, I worked a weekend and I worked, I ran a skid steer about a month later and I ran a skid steer and I worked a whole weekend, sun up, sun down, both days in the middle of July. And uh, the machine I rented did not have a cab and it was hot. My God, it was hot. And uh, I was wore out. So Monday morning, I was actually driving to work and uh, I, I, I slept so many miles to work. It's not even funny. And I got to, I got stopped grabbing me another coffee. I already had one coffee on the way there. Stopped grabbing another coffee, and then uh, I grabbed that coffee, tried to set, wake myself up, and then next thing I know, I woke up as I was bumping into the back of somebody at the red light, right as I was about to turn on the road to go to my job. And uh, when I, I said, oh no, I've, I've never been in a wreck in my life, and I just bumped into it. My wife did worse damage backing in my car into her sister's sister's car, and uh, so I was like, man, now I'm getting a ticket, and so. That was kind of the deciding factor that, okay, now it's time to pull the trigger to go full time because that ticket was going to be on record for a you know, rearing collision and a, uh, and a speeding ticket, both. And I was like, man, I got, I'm going to have to quit or I'm going to have to get fired. So at the time, I was already making more on the side than I was as my regular job. And uh, I was like, well, I guess this is the time to make the switch. It was, I don't know if I was actually ready yet. But I really had no choice. So uh, I made I put my two week notice in. Didn't tell them why. I just told them, you know, business is taking off and I'm I'm starting to do which I it kind of was. It wasn't it was, but it wasn't, I guess you could say. It was I thought it was, but now what I'm doing now is a lot more than then. And uh it was that was the that was why I switched. That was because I if I didn't quit, I probably would have been fired. And uh, but it's been great. I'm so glad that I did that. And uh, I don't know if it was a blessing to get in that little fender bender. Divine uh, intervention, right there, man. Yeah. So I don't know if that was it. My my entrance currently says otherwise, but I'm I'm kind of glad it happened. I guess. Yeah. And uh, I'm, but I, I've made the switch, and that was July. I guess July 13th, 2022 is my last day. And I started my business in February 2022. So it didn't take very long to already start making more on the side on the weekends or, or getting off work and go knock out a job in the evenings and then coming home. And uh, for one, I was working way too much. And that was, I hate working that much. Uh, yeah. bro, now she's five, a five year old daughter. So I was tired of working that much. So now it's, I was glad to make switch because now it's like, this is the third week that I haven't really done anything because we had rain week before last and then last week we're on vacation and then this week there's rain again. And well, you know, at least I'm not working. <laughs> Say at least I'm not working. I'm not well, making and, any money, but it, I'm home. Yeah. You're home and you know, you get that family time and you know, that downtime is precious because there's so many little tasks, whether it be marketing or admin or accounting, like it, the guys that take care of that during the rainy times so they can focus on the work on the good days. Like they're the ones that are really successful in reaching the goals they want to reach. Mm -hmm. um, we yeah. worked with a guy here in Illinois and, you know, winter hit and he's just like, yeah, I want to do this in the spring. I'm like, what's your plan for the winter? And he's like, I don't really have one. And we kind of laid out a plan and gave him some benchmarks 
you know, rebrand, a new website, this, this, you know, all of it. Um, and when spring hit, he had his CRM for managing his customers dialed in. He had his website and his SEO ranking high because he had all winter to get it ranking. And like he like he doubled his business because of the work he did in the winter. That's awesome. That's something yeah. I need to work on because winter time here, it doesn't snow at all. Like I don't even know what snow is hardly, but it's just wet and can't do anything. And plus, I've just noticed his business is just dead in the winter time no one's calling nothing it's just like they wait until may june july well really it's june july august and then everything's just there's crunch time but yeah in winter from november to end of january it's it's dead and there's like i can't go push snow or anything it's nothing but you like got that here, you so. got that excavator man if it's rainy season like have you looked into like specializing in some drainage fall drainage i haven't i have not but I've I've tried, you know, I try to advertise as much as I can in the wintertime, but I yeah. just Facebook advertising is kind of hit or miss as well. It's changed a lot over the last two, three years, man. I mean, three years ago you could put twenty dollars behind hi, my name's Ryan, and you'd get somebody going, What do what kind of work do you do? And now it's like you've got to be dialed in and spend a little more money and you've got you gotta know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. It's I don't know if there's if I'm doing something wrong, but I know when I do advertise, I advertise in a certain radius of my location. Yeah. And I'll I'll throw 100, 150 bucks on a, a post to where I run a day or two. And then I'll get messages from people like from Kentucky or something. And I'm like, no idea why yeah. I popped up over there. So yeah, I mean, so there's three ways. I mean, I don't want to go too deep on Facebook, but there's three ways that you can do a paid ad on that, right? You can just do the post and then click the boost button. You can go into meta, you know, your meta back end, your business center, meta business center, and you can create the ad there, which gives you a little bit more targeting ability, a little bit more control of the radius and all that. And then you can also go into the ads manager, which you got to kind of know what you're doing in there. But in there, you can get super granular, retarget ads, upfront ads, pick specific zip codes. Like you can get real granular on that. So I find the guys that, that have that reach outside of their service area just boosted a post and they're not using the other tools that Facebook provides them. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm only using yeah. boost posts and occasionally I'll click uh, promote business locally, which prevents the whole business, not just a, a, a post. Yeah. Just open up your business suite, your meta business center. And you can actually make an ad there and it's super easy to walk through and do that. And you can, it, it gives you a lot more flexibility on how to create the ad in Facebook. Um, because learning ads manager, it's a full-time job for seven to 10 days yeah. to, to really learn it. But the, the meta business suite actually gives you a lot more control over how the ad looks and you can do some testing and some other things, small budget, large budget. Um, but it's simple. The user experience and the, and the work, the usability of it, 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 it's not too complex that a business owner who doesn't specialize in marketing can't figure out how to walk through it. Yeah. Gotcha. What I mean, how have you grown these last two years? Like you hit same revenue levels that you were making from work as a truck driver, which I mean, you guys aren't making a million a year, but you're not making minimum wage. You're making good living. How did you supplement that within six months? Like what strategies did you do out to start getting that weekend work? Uh, it was just basically Facebook. I was I okay. posting on Facebook all the time and I was, you know, inviting people to my page and I was growing the page has grown quick like it grew a lot quicker than and than most other people in this business like they've been business forever and i'll look at their facebook page and they've got three or four hundred likes and i've got 2500 now so it's just like how did i get that that fast so um i i, I should have done this inside because i am distracted out here <laughs> <laughs> so what are you doing for marketing outside of facebook are you doing anything at all not really. Uh, no, I don't really, I haven't really dabbled into the Google business because I'm still kind of confused on that. Uh, trying to figure out that I, I've tried to verify where I, where my business is located, which is located at home. Uh, I had to make a video recently of the street signs, stay in this yeah. my business and all that. So it's kind of, and I don't, I don't know if that's been approved or not. That was a couple of weeks ago. I haven't even looked at it and, uh, I haven't really had a chance to, to do it. Now I do get some Google calls. Because when I answer the phone, it's it says something about you know automated things saying something about this is a Google call, 
and then somebody starts talking. But it's not my actual phone number, which kind of aggravates me because Google gave me my own phone number. And uh, huh. so, like, I'll get on the phone, I'm like, hey, text me your address because half the time I'm driving when I answer your phone call. I say, hey, text me your address, you know, and your name and your address. And uh, <laughs> I won't ever get a text from them. And then I'm like, I talked to somebody the other day, but I forgot who it was and what their number was and all that. So, Google, I've got to, I've really got to kind of learn it, I guess, this winter, maybe. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a super powerful tool. I mean, you think about it, even if the numbers have dropped, it used to be 92% of all internet searches happened on Google. That's crazy. You know, so, so the power of that. So even if you're in a rural area with a, you know, with a population of 15, 20,000, they're using that every day to figure out items they want to buy for their house. You know, people visiting, check out where they want to get pizza. Or if you forget what time those restaurants open and close, then they're constantly going to Google for all that. So what we forget is that we are trained. We've habitually trained ourselves to use Google as basically our life encyclopedia. So yeah. my first thought is like, oh, I need to get some dirt work done. You don't even think about it. Like you instantly go to Google and you're like, excavation, dirt work, grading near me, right? And then you start looking at that and like, all right, how many reviews do they have? How long have they been in business? And and like, you go through that social process. Um, yeah. Sometimes they go from there to Facebook. Sometimes they just call. Sometimes they go to your Facebook business page and then to your personal page. Like it, it all is like a web. It all interconnects. So like to me, oh. there's like three three circles and not to make fun of Kamala Harris with all those memes going around about her Venn diagrams and those three overlapping circles. But, but to me, it's like the Trinity of marketing. You know, you've got, you've got organic branding on the ground, yard signs, flyers, business cards. Like you can't neglect that to a degree. You've got your traditional online, your website, your SEO, your Google, and then you've got social media. So it was like a three pronged approach, but they all kind of overlap because if somebody finds your website, they go look at your Facebook page. If they find your Facebook page, they go look at your website. You know, they see your business card. They want to go check out your website. And, and so they all kind of work together. So to say, hey, I'm going to spend all of my attention on a website and Google SEO, like you're missing the boat because you're not incorporating a little bit of social and a little bit of grassroots and vice versa. You can do that in any way you want it in those three circles. But you've got to have a little bit of touch in all three because they will overlap and people will look at multiple channels before they make a decision. That makes sense. A lot of people do Facebook as far as just posting. They'll just post. Does anybody have any recommendations on who can do a driveway or whatever? And I get tagged in that so many times. And every time I get tagged in a post like that, I'll have friends or family or past customers that have that tag me or my business in it. And I'll look through there and I'm like, I got tagged more than anybody else did. Anybody else's business or anybody else personally has gotten tagged on this, but I don't hear from the person who posted it at all. And I don't understand that at all. So I used so to say, reach out you know, to them. Yeah, I used to I used to just tag my business and say, you know, feel free to reach out to us anytime. And then now I've gotten to where I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to send them a message directly and say, hey, this is and I'll send them a link to my Facebook page. And I say, this is what I you know, this is what I do. And sometimes I get responses. I get more responses there that way than I do yep. just somebody. tag. And I'm, I'm, it's crazy to me because I get tagged the most, but. They don't reach out to me at all. It's like, why did you even ask? One I don't, I don't even think they even reach out to anybody when they do that. It's crazy. Yeah. So here's a, here's a little <laughs> tip for like anyone out there that's talking about this. I found that if you send them a comment on that post that says, hey, Mary, I'm sending you a private message. You may have to check your message requests folder. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is if you're not friends with them, Facebook may not deliver that to their inbox. They put it in that separate folder, message requests, and it's off to the side and you don't see it. And then like three months later, they're like, oh, he did message me. So I like to tell them yeah. in a comment on that post because it does it does one thing. It makes sure that they know that you're sending them a message and to look for it maybe in a, like the message request folder. And the other thing it does, it shows everybody else that commented on that, that you engage with her right away. So now they're like, man, this guy's on top of it. If I need my driveway done next year, I'm calling Dylan. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's yeah. a double, it's a double prong approach to that by commenting and like making it personal, just nice. Doesn't have to be long. Just like, Oh, Mary. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tagging me, Mary. I'm sending you a message right now. I'd love to talk to you about your driveway. I'm sure we can help you. Yeah. Boom. 
Yeah, I, I, I've had that issue before. With people messaging me and me not seeing the message requests. So that's why I've, I've when I when I comment on there now, I say, hey, you know, I yeah. sent you a message. Check your messages, and we'll go from there. Yeah, but sometimes I, I I've I've started adding make you know maybe in your message request folder because like someone's like oh I check your messages like well, he never messaged me he said he did because they don't go look at they don't hit that red dot in the top left corner to expand it for marketplace message requests and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just like to like, actually verbally say, check your message requests folder. Cause then they're like, what's that? Oh, that's right. We got that up in that corner. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll, I'll start doing that. My, my little Facebook pro tip for everybody out there that's using it or getting tagged in posts, but getting tagged in posts is powerful. And what that does, in my opinion, it just shows you how strong of a brand you're building in your community because you've got so many friends, family, customers that respect you and trust you that say, Hey, this is your guy. And that's pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've noticed that the other day. So I, I went and did an estimate for a guy and he's like, Hey, he said, somebody tagged you in the neighborhood post like two or three days ago. And that's how I got your, and I was like, I don't remember seeing that at all. So I actually went back to that page and I was like, I don't have a clue where this guy saw my, my stuff from. But when I was there, I was talking to him and he's like, yeah, somebody in the neighborhood posted, you did their driveway for him. And I was like, who was it? And, uh, he, he's like, man, I don't know who it was. It was two or three days ago. And, uh, I got thinking about it. And I was like, well, I've done so-and-so's driveway and I've done their driveway. I've done dirt work there. And I was like, man, I didn't realize how many houses I've been in this neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> I've, been in, and, I've done so much work in this neighborhood. It's not even funny. And, and and like, here's another small little tip for you. Like those private groups like that, even if you don't remember who it was, go to back to that group and just be like, Hey, whoever it was that tagged us about your driveway, I just wanted to say, thank you tag the guy that you're going to do work for he and I have connected and we're going to take care of his driveway too. We really appreciate it. Cause again, you're just building that social trust with the rest of that community group. That's a great idea. Cause I've been trying to figure out how I can kind of reintroduce myself into these groups that in the neighborhoods and stuff like that without bombarding them with pictures of the work <clears> I've done. Now I don't, I don't want to be, there is guys that do that out here. But yeah, and I did that at first, but I don't want to bombard them with pictures of the work I do and and, and almost seem like I'm desperate. So, so just just take a few minutes and plan out like seasonality, typical projects to get done that year. And what area of that project could you educate those people on? Because people love that. Right. So you yeah. could just be like, hey, Copper Creek community. It's Dylan over here. It's getting to be fall. It's going to be start raining, which means you're going to start getting potholes, waterboard, this and that. If you're going to have your driveway done this year, make sure that you get this type of material. The line binder holds this. This will, and, and you'll get an extra six months to a year without having to do extra grading. Hope you guys have a great day. And that's it. Like you're not selling a thing. Like that's little, little tips like that. And all of a sudden you're the go-to guy for driveways. Great idea. <laughs> You know, you're yeah. the go, yeah, you're the, just the go-to guy for it. So, um, yeah. it's just kind of, and, and to me, it's just planning that stuff out. Like when you're like on a rainy day, like, Hey, how can we engage with these groups a little different or start thinking outside the box? I take so many ideas from online internet based, like coaches and marketing companies and go, how can I implement that into our e-commerce skid steer construction business? You know, so Look outside of this industry for tips and tricks on how to market and brand your business, because what works in one will work in another. You somebody just have to tweak it to fit what you want it to do. Good idea. Ah, so you're, you're, you're rock and rolling full time. You've got one, two guys that help you when you need it. I've got one. Occasionally I can get a second one if I need someone on a shovel or a rake. Yeah. But typically it's just one guy. It's one of my best friends from, from high school. And, uh, he's actually just took a job this week. So kind of, <laughs> he's, I, I he's was, got me three or four more weeks. And I was like, well, I got two more weeks left to rain and then probably a week left to dry out if we get hot weather. So I'm kind of in a bind now. Cause I don't have, I won't have that help anymore, which that's how I started. And then last year I, I, I hired somebody on and he worked for me and now he has a job at the municipal district here. But uh, I needed somebody else's help, and my buddy was he didn't have anything to do. So I was like, man, you can come work for me. And it works out because he has a three quarter ton diesel truck. And so he can help me, you know, haul my equipment, haul in my dump trailer, uh, whatever. But when he leaves, I'm back to being by myself. And now I've got bigger machines. I've got, I've got 
bigger jobs. So it's kind of like, what's the next step? What am I going to do now by myself? And I, I don't want to really hire anybody because come November, it's going to be pretty slow again. So that's kind of my issue. And hiring somebody that has a family is, is my biggest concern. Two people that I've hired on before, the single, maybe have a girlfriend or something, but they don't have a whole family to pay. I mean, a family to feed. And, yeah. Uh, that's my issue. So uh, I'll tell you the other, other employee pool, especially newer business owners overlook is the recently retired operators from, from excavation companies. Cause they go home and spend four months not working anymore. And they're like, mm-hmm. get me out of this house. I don't <laughs> want to work 12 months out of the year, but I'll gladly work with you June, July, August, and into September. Yeah. Right. So I feel like that. And they're, if you find the right one, they're wise. They can be a mentor. Yeah. And, you know, they're fl- Hey, you don't need to work today. It's like, that's fine. Like they're getting their social security, their pension, you know, like, you're just fun money and more reason to get out of the house. You're not paying the bills and buying the groceries. Um, yeah. So I feel like that's, a, that's a, that's an employee pool that a lot of younger businesses overlook as far as potentially finding that part-time help that, you know, if he only works one day a week, he's cool with it. <clears throat> I've had a few people, few older gentlemen reach out to me about that before. And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm not hiring right now. Sorry, but I've never thought of it that way. That's a, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. You know, it's the same concept of why you like hiring single guys is because they're not as dependent on that weekly check. So neither are retirees. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. That's a great idea. I guess I'll reach back out to him here in the next couple of weeks when I, when I'm by myself again, when you're by yourself again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. You might want to reach out to him now and get him prepped for when you are by yourself. Cause otherwise you're going to be trying to manage jobs, manage customers and hire and, and get things rolling with part-timers. So I, I thought about that. I thought about posting recent, like soon and saying, Hey, we'll be, we'll be looking soon. But uh, I haven't done that because my buddy that's working for me, I don't know if he wants everybody to know he took another job. So I haven't, I, haven't, I need to get with him and say, Hey man, can you, can I post that? Like, I guess all you got to do own business. Yeah. All but you got to do is just say we're expanding. Up. All you got to do is say we're expanding the team. You don't have to say he's leaving. Okay. Yeah, that's good. You know, I'll try that because I, I want to get somebody lined up, ready to go. Uh, but I want somebody that has a little bit of experience. At the same time, I want somebody that's uh, younger and doesn't have a family or in that instant yeah. older and doesn't have a bunch of bills or whatever. So, right. Uh, and I, I, my personal opinion, it's like I get on soapboxes every now and then. My soapbox right now is short form video. Like, take a video of you operating the, the excavator and just be like, hey, man, it's Dylan over at Lone Star Land Management. We're expanding the team. If you've always wanted to sit and play with the joysticks and move a bunch of dirt and you've got the drive and, you, you know, you've got the willing to work and, you know, get, should hit me up and let's talk. Yeah. Short-term videos is something I wish I did more often. I've dabbled into videos. I've got a couple of videos on YouTube and uh, whew, that's, that's a lot of work. <laughs> well, a it's a, work. it's a lot of work. One, because you don't know how to do it because yeah. you don't do it often enough. It's just like the first time you did a driveway versus now. And then the other reason why is like, <laughs> yeah. you're trying to make it perfect. Yeah. Right. So like I tell everybody, Mike, just get your phone out, shoot the video get into the habit of doing it every day. Yeah. Just go into your phone editor and like edit the length of it and start with that. Like you don't have to have the overlays and the transitions and the logos. Like just start with you talking or showing what you do. And then you can either learn CapCut or some other software, or you can say, Hey, I'm going to find some kid in my neighborhood for 15 bucks that can edit a video and I'll have them do one a week. Um, Yeah. But just just start shooting video and putting it out there. Because here's the beautiful thing about video. You can use just the audio from it if you ever need to. You can use the whole video. Or you can take a screenshot of a pause segment of it, and there's your images. Mm -hmm. Where if you take an image, you don't have video or audio. If you take audio, you don't have video or images. Where if you take video, you can get all three. Yeah. Yeah, I've done done some video and never really... I mean, I, of course, Snapchat, and I've tried to do TikTok, but TikTok, you're placing the video together and all that. But uh, I've done YouTube videos, but they're more long, drawn out videos showing kind of what I do. And I've actually gotten a few jobs recently because they said, hey, I 
you know, I watched I'm, your YouTube videos and it seemed like you did a pretty good job. And I was like, man, I wish I could keep doing those YouTube videos, but for one, it's hot out here and a GoPro battery doesn't last long at all in the heat. And so I'm steadily flipping through batteries and then trying to cool the camera off or cool batteries off in the truck. And so it's, it's hard to do a long video because of that short video they- on my phone. Yeah, easy, don't easier. don't they make a, a compatible battery that plugs into like a cigarette lighter? Yeah, or you like so yeah, you can just the, run a steady state power to the camera instead of the battery. You you can until it overheats, but out here it overheats so quick. Yeah, the cameras get so hot so quick, and then the batteries will start to swell, and uh, so that's the only issue I've had with the GoPro stuff. I wish I could find something that's a little bit maybe better than a GoPro, but I don't really know anything better than a GoPro. But that's kind of why I stopped because I was like, man, I, I, I'll get, you know, 20 minutes on a charge because the battery is just so hot. And then I pop in the truck and hang the GoPro on the air condition and and, <laughs> and go crazy. So, yeah. So I've I'm got two good videos. They're they're good. But I, I, I wish I could do more, like especially the parking lots we've been doing recently and stuff like that. I was like, man, these are these would be perfect videos to do. But there's just so much involved with trying to capture all that footage. I, I'm a huge devil advocate fan. So I'm just like. Just buy a second phone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess I could. <laughs> the battery's going to last long. The camera's probably better than yeah. the GoPro. And it, you can buy a yeah. suction cup mount or a little handheld gimbal for stability. You could even buy mm-hmm. a wireless mic if down the road, you know, but you can mount it to take video from inside the cab while you're working. You can walk around with it. You can set it up on a tripod to get you working. I, it's all the functionality of a GoPro with a multiple hour battery life. And a whole lot easier to operate. And the user experience of actually editing, there's no uploading in that. You just open it up, hit auto adjust, clip it and yeah. trim it, add yeah. it to another video, clip it and trim it. And, you know, it's not perfect, but it's done. And like people don't, I think perfect videos push people away. Yeah. They want to see real world stuff. That makes sense. You know. Yeah. Um, oh, so what's your vision for? The old Lone Star. Like for five years from now, you and I are doing another episode of the podcast. Like what's your business look like? Uh, Well, I don't really know. I don't really want to grow that much as far as bigger projects. And I really don't want to have a bunch of employees. So I'm not real sure where I want to be in five years. I guess I need to figure that out. But right now I'm going on like a year to year basis. What I want to do this year, what I want to do next year. Like next year, I want to buy a skid steer. And uh, I wish I had one now, but I'm not buying one this year. Uh, I want to get to the selection first. And then uh, I, I want to, I want to have a skid steer. I want to have a little bit bigger excavator, I think. But I'm not real sure if I want to get in the land clearing work. I, I, I know that's a, a huge money maker. I know a few people that do it around here. And I'm not real sure if I want to get in that land clearing work or not. I know I don't want to get into mulching. When I first started this business, I was like, I got to buy a skid steer with the mulcher. I want to do that. That looks like so much fun. And uh, I got some price quotes on them. And I was like, oh, my gosh, maybe not right now. <laughs> but now that I know the guys that I know that do mulching and they tell me about just how hard on the machines it is and the, the upkeep on them. And I'm like, I don't I don't really know if I want to do that. Plus, I myself don't like a, a finished look of mulching. I don't like mulch all over the ground. I've actually done a few jobs where they get done mulching, and then I'm like, I'll come in there, and I'll, I'll rip up all that mulch and haul it away because you don't want mulch just sitting there on the ground forever. I don't know how it will how it de- decomposes and all that, but I've hauled it away before. So I don't want to do mulching now, but when I started this business, I did. Well, but it's like it's like buying the Tonka trunk through. instead of the Hot Wheel, man. It's the coolest toy in the in the yard, man. Like that's the one you want to do. And then you're like, wait a minute, it's not very functional for everything I want to do. Yeah, absolutely. And I've, uh, thankfully, my wife is here to clear my head with stuff like that because I'm like, I want to buy this and I want to buy that, and she's like, you're not buying anything. Uh, so <laughs> is she still, is she just? Or I gotta I gotta ask, man. Is she just the no lady, or is she actually like a trusted confidant that tells you yes when the things are right too? She is just the note. She is a, she, she, I, I've, as I've told her before, I was like, I can buy a lottery ticket that is guaranteed to win me a million dollars. Like I know it's going to win me a million dollars, but I got to spend a thousand dollars on it. She's going to say, no, I don't want you to spend a thousand dollars. I want you to spend a thousand dollars. That's hilarious. <laughs> which, which that's how, that's kind of how she is. But 
she understands once I do make the purchase, she's not too happy about it at first. And then she realizes, okay, maybe that was a good purchase. And then like, like my dump trailer, that almost turned into an argument when I wanted to buy my dump trailer when I first started my business. I bought my dump trailer before I, I quit my full-time job. And uh, she's like, I don't, you don't need a dump trailer, this, that, and the other. And turns out my dump trailer has made me more money than any other equipment I own. My dump trailer is number one moneymaker that I own. So I said, yeah, sorry, I was right. <laughs> yeah. But so. I think it's good to have, even if it's always a negative no, I think it's good to have somebody always question you so that way you're just not on a free reign because it's so easy to get in our heads going, I can't do that work without that excavator. Oh my God, I need a bulldozer or, oh, we're, we're going to start doing driveway work. I need three attachments so I can cover all the different aspects. And next, you know, you don't have the work lined up. You now outlaid a ton of money. And like just to have that one person like to make you internally justify the purchase is is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm glad she she gets mad about fir- a purchase at first and then she kind of cools down on it. And I've learned my lesson before to I've I've bought something before and uh called her and said, Hey, you know, we just bought this machine for the or this attachment for the tractor. And she was like, We did what? And <laughs> that turned into an argument for like a week. And then now she realizes, okay, maybe that was a good attachment. Because what I did is I bought a tiller for the tractor. It was you know, 2000 yeah. bucks. But I didn't, I didn't tell her anything. I just, yeah, but you broke the process. It. You broke the process. <laughs> you didn't talk it. to her first. So, yeah. I, I, yeah, I bought it and she wasn't happy about it. And I was like, this just makes it so much easier to rip up. So, so rip up grass to do a new driveway. So what I do is I used to use my excavator or whatever to rip up the grass for a new construction driveway rip all the grass up, get below that topsoil. And uh, I used to do it with an excavator or the bucket of my tractor or the, the box blade. And I was like, this is not efficient at all. And uh, then once you get done with all that, scraping up all that dirt, you have just clumps of sod. You can't spread that. And so I got the bright idea one day. I was like, let me try a tiller. Let's till it up. And so I tilled it up. And that's actually how I do new construction driveways now. Is If it's grass, I will till all that up. And then, you know, scoop it up and I'll either haul the dirt away, which most of the time they don't want it hauled away. They want it spread on site. And then once you have tilled dirt, it's just powdery dirt. So I'll just spread it on site. So, I, you know, I'll charge extra for doing that or charge extra for hauling away. And then top pole is like gold around here. So I can yeah. charge them for hauling it away and charge somebody that's going to buy it. So, uh, but the tiller was definitely a good, good investment, even though she was like, and $2,000 is nothing. I know, but it was because I didn't tell her. And I was like, hey, I called her and I said, we just bought this tiller. And she was like, do what? So yeah, you yeah. would have been better off just saying, I just bought this tiller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably would have. <laughs> yeah, hey, guess what we did? All right. I got, we didn't do shit, Dylan. Like, what'd you do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but she's she's good because there's stuff that I've wanted to buy. And she said no. And she was like, 100 percent put her foot down and she, no you are not buying that and uh i guess it's worked out because i, I probably didn't need it because i didn't have i didn't buy it and i don't feel i don't not yeah, use it I, now, so. I feel like that no just makes you you have to have conviction and be adamant that it's something yeah. you fully need to, to 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 really start that fight you yeah. know yeah. um we're in this like the the truck i have now like i have an f450 i had an f250 gas motor 200,000 miles and I was like I need diesel I need something bigger for what I'm towing and uh, yeah that was a big that was a big no she's no no and I said I'm doing it sorry and then it turned into an argument for a few days but now I think she realizes that it's good that I have the bigger truck and I don't have a 200,000 mile gas truck that I'm towing 20 something thousand pounds with so right she doesn't she, she still doesn't necessarily like it but she understands it's a tax write-off it goes against your income it's it's going to save you money this year <laughs> and i say that to everything and it drives her crazy <laughs> <laughs> it's a tax write-off like we bought a golf cart recently i said i can bring it to a job site and run it on the job site and boom that's a tax write-off <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, my my because we used to have S corps when we owned bars and restaurants, and then the LLC didn't start. I, mean, I was never an LLC owner until about six seven years ago. My buddy's like, live your entire life off your business credit card. 
He's like, everything you do. I go, why? He goes, because if it's not a write-off, then it's just your income. And it was just your income, even if you used your personal income to buy it. And he's like, so you're just going to get taxed on the purchase dollar amount instead of the paycheck. He's like, it does not matter because it all flows to you. Yeah. So he's like, we mean, <clears throat> he's like, your accountant hates it because like every purchase has to be, you know, is this a write-off? Is it not? But he's like, he's like, it's been very beneficial to me because there's so many things he's like, oh yeah, we can find a way to write that off that I would have never, I would just would have bought with my personal money. Yeah. So, yeah, that's awesome. But when you realize like, and especially if you're a solopreneur and you don't have business partners, like it's just funneling right down to you on your taxes with your K K one form K. Yeah. So like, who cares if you, you know, buy flooring for the basement and be like renovating the office. Like that's what we're going to label it as. Or the accountant says, no, I'm like, all right. then you just get taxed on that purchase dollars. If it was income, it's the same thing as if it would have been income. You had to buy it anyway. That's true. It was just a weird mindset shift. And I was like, oh, okay. So yeah, I mean, my Amex gets a workout every month. <laughs> More for the business That's and personal, tough. but I mean, it's, it's, it's top line billing for sure. There's some months you open it up and you're like, how much did we spend? Like, Jesus. There's no different in excavation, man. It's no big deal to, to see 20K pile up real quick. Yeah. For sure. Especially a couple couple <clears throat> big jobs, some material, a little maintenance, and boom, you're there. Yeah. I've been recently buying all kinds of stuff as far as, I guess, maintenance or problems, and that all happened at once. And it happens to me every year since I've been in business. There is a stretch of like three to four weeks of just absolutely terrible bad luck. Every year I have this one stretch and uh, I just got out of it, I think, I hope. But everything was going wrong as far as uh, I, I was in my kitchen and then I heard a, a loud noise and uh, it sounded like a tire blew out. And I looked outside, didn't see nothing of it. And then when I came outside, the entire glass door of my tractor was just shattered all over the trailer, <laughs> all over the road. And I was like, what? I, I heard something. I didn't know what it was. Well, that started that. Then I uh, fixed it, got a, my blue hydraulic line, uh, and then my my buddy, my helper or whatever, was on the excavator, and then a track fell off, and I, that track has fell off before, and I was like, all right, let's put it back on. Well, I don't know much about tracks, what you call them, but they have those metal cables or whatever that go all and hold tension or whatever. That popped, and of course, once you do that, you can't really put tension on the tracks anymore. So I was like, well, crap, now I have to buy a new track. And then, so I ordered one and I looked at my other track and I was like, this one's about to do the same thing. So I had to order a second track. So I ordered two tracks. I ordered a door for my tractor. Uh, and then we got the tracks on and then my buddy was moving some uh, trees the other day and uh, he pulled forward and popped the windshield on the excavator. And I was like, man, I'm just tired of buying stuff right now so and i was in that little stretch of, of bad luck and I, like i said i hope i'm out of it but I've, I've spent a lot more money than i expected in the last couple of weeks and that's another reason my wife's like she wasn't too happy about that and i was like this this part of it like this is part of this industry you're gonna have stuff like that happen now glass on your tractor just combusting for no reason at all is kind of weird but tracks is a thing and, and you know, you're, you're going to have stuff hit your win windows when you're in your machines. So, uh, yeah. And, you happy. know, you should have that overhead built into your, your estimates. I mean, yeah. You know, and whether you're part of it was so like the, the tracks and the, and the windshield, both the tracks, we were at my buddy's house and he was out, out with my helper and he was just clearing in his house. So I wasn't charging him for anything because he was, he's my helper. <laughs> it's, that's when shit the always breaks off. when you're working for free. Yeah. And then we had hurricane barrel come through here. Uh, I guess a little over two weeks ago. And I like to help people out after, you know, any kind of storm we get out here. And of course we were doing that for free, helping somebody out with had a tree on their house, stuff like that. Of course he popped the window then. And I was like, man, just <laughs> not making any money right now. I'm losing money. It, it'll come around though. <laughs> I, I, I tell you what, the guy, the guys that I know that actually give back to the community in times of need, they're the ones that just, I mean, they probably have the smallest marketing budgets of anybody else because everybody in town recommends them yeah. calls them because you know and it's the ones that do it selflessly like our, my friend Dwayne used to go plow the these 20 elderly people's driveways in his town every winter didn't get asked to do it didn't tell anybody he was doing it just went and did it 
And after a year of that, like everybody in town knew that whenever the snow came, he took care. He, he would go plow their driveways before he did his own, hmm. you know, and he owned an excavation company. And like there wasn't an, his phone rang nonstop, whether it be like a small job or a massive job or a city wanting him to bid. And it was just because they just knew that he gave back and took care of the, the community and he, and he did it selflessly. Yeah. And I, I, so last year we had a storm come through here and it was just a, just a thunderstorm, but it knocked out power to the entire, entire city that I live in. And, uh, so I've got chainsaws to go to an excavator. And so I posted on Facebook, like if there's any trees down on houses, if there's any trees down on roads, anything like that, contact me. Well, I posted a picture of my machines and you know what, you know, I'm willing to help for free. I'm not charging anybody. And, um, I, got flooded with messages and comments people needing help and i was like i can't help everybody this is crazy and uh so i helped what I, who i could and uh then there's a, a local lawyer around here and he he ended up reaching out to me and said hey man I'm, I'm happy what you did i'm glad what you did uh here's some some tickets 14 rows back from home play at the astros game for free for you and your wife and i was like man that's awesome i appreciate that a lot and we you know me and my wife had a, a great time there but, but when he said that it was like everything started lining up as far as not I best being blessed. I don't know, because I helped people. I helped a bunch of people out there. They spent the whole day out there. And uh, within that week alone, I had got seven jobs that, that they had contacted me back saying, let's do it. Let's do it. And I was like, oh, my gosh, seven in one week, all because I did that. And I'm like, I don't it wasn't that they saw that. It's just. I think I was being blessed for for helping out. I, I guess that's what that was. But I got so many all at once, and I just thought that was the craziest thing how that happened. It was just yeah. boom, 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 right after that. I was like, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, I don't believe in coincidences. You know, no. So there's there's yeah. definitely a connection, whatever level of that is, of like good karma, spirituality, like you name it. But like, there's definitely a connection. Yeah, yeah I think that's for sure what that was because I just spent a day helping people out. And that was, and I got blessed with it big time. I mean, just lined up, boom, 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 boom. And uh, of course, then I was busy already and I got seven lined up and I was like, oh, I'm already behind. <laughs> so luckily everybody was, was understanding. I haven't had anybody since I started this business that was like, I'm going to use somebody else because you're taking too long to get to it. Yeah. I feel really, like I residential custom getting... residential customers tend to be a little bit more patient. Like they want yeah. it done. Like there's, there's emergency needs, of course, right? Like culverts get blown sure. out or like, and like, yeah, they expect your help right away. But the average person that's like, Hey, I'm building a new house. We're going to start in four months. I need a road built in my property. If you say I can be there in three weeks, they go cool. Yeah. Or you yeah. call a contractor. He's like, I need this done by Friday. Like he literally means I need it done by Friday. Cause there's a guy on Monday that we're waiting, you know, like, so you screw up everyone's schedules, but I feel like residential people for the most part are like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not as bad. I've done a, a few little commercial jobs here and there, and it's a little bit more time, time sensitive. Want to get done quicker, but uh, the amount of rain we've had this year, that's been a major holdup. And like I said, luckily, even the commercial jobs we've done this year, luckily they haven't been like, hurry up, hurry up. They understand like, we're getting an ungodly amount of rain this year. And I, uh, I'd, so I'd be looking at, state. man, if I, if I was you, I, cause you could still do this when it was raining, right? Like you just got to throw a little grass seed down when you're done, but like, man, French drains, downspout burials, like what other things do you know, the people want that they don't realize they want until it's raining. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. My problem is getting in there and tearing up the yard. I'm like, man, if I tear the yard up, then I'll have to fix the yard and, then you then you sell so them the grass then you sell them the grass yeah so i can do a whole yard renovation yeah i guess i could do that <laughs> yeah upsell 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 i mean people don't like getting out and doing that grass seeding stuff in the hay but if that's what if that's what seals the deal for the rest of it either a outsource it to a local landscape company or and pay you know charge for it or just suck it up and do it yeah, yeah or take your sure. take or take a relative who's like 15 and be like here spread and throw <laughs> <laughs> yeah child sure. labor laws do not include you your family <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's for sure that's awesome. oh man that's fantastic uh, 
my the, I guess I, the issue I'm having with with my my business part of it is the the numbers trying to get all the numbers all the time. So I've tried to figure out uh, QuickBooks and I can't I haven't really given it I guess enough to figure out QuickBooks. I do have a pretty good spreadsheet that I designed. And I, I do everything on my spreadsheets uh, as far as you know, it all makes the calculates for me. And I can put, you know, how much the job costs, how much the material costs, uh, labor, rentals, anything like that. It'll automatically calculate at the end. Then it'll calculate at the bottom for the monthly. And then it goes on to another sheet that calculates for the whole year. Uh, but as far as my other expenses that I buy, that's kind of my hang up. I guess I could put that on another spreadsheet. But QuickBooks, I'd like to get into. And I haven't, I haven't figured that out. How to work? How to work QuickBooks? Yeah, and it can be a chore, but I recommend it. If you if you went deep enough to make multi sheet macro spreadsheets, like you'll figure out QuickBooks, right? Like you, it'd be a yeah. little bit of cumbersome for a while and all that. But once you do all that, then you can start running balance sheets and P and Ls, and you can categorize where those expenses are. And I can't tell you how nice it is to like look at a P and L and go. Why are, like, for example, like, why are office supplies twice as expensive this year than last year? Right. Yes, and and, they, like and whenever, see and, that difference. yeah. And like, and like, whoa, our phone bills this year have drastically increased. Did, you know, did our plan change without us noticing it or did we do international business? Or like, but it gives you those ability to go ask those questions and go dig deep in it. Because it's not just like, man, our expenses went up 3%. Like, no, this one went up 20%. This one's down 4%. Overall, we're up 23%. But you've got one problem category that you don't have an eye on. It's like your fuel could triple, right? Why is it tripling? Yeah. Oh, shit. I'm maneuvering a ton of jobs out, out of town. And then you're like, well, am, I, am I estimating that properly? Is my mobilization fee? Am I bringing the equipment home every night and I'm getting nine miles to the gallon? Or are we able to leave it? until the job's complete. And you can start looking at those little small efficiencies. I mean, you can start compounding those half percent, 1% efficiencies. That's when you can get really successful because that 1% savings isn't a 1% increase in income. It's multiple. Because you do it job after job after job. Yeah. Uh, that's one thing I plan on doing this, this winter is trying to figure out QuickBooks. Because I need, I need something because just any little things that I buy you know, buy ice for the coolers or whatever. Like, how do I categorize that? Where do I put it at? I guess I just need to either figure out QuickBooks or do another spreadsheet for just all, so, you know, just different things. So have you played around with chat GTP yet? I don't think I have. I think I might've downloaded that because it come across my, my, my phone and I downloaded it, but I don't think I've- Yeah, go to your computer it. and create an account for chat GPT. It's free. It's just artificial intelligence, right? But like- We've done this for a couple of guys in our coaching program, just like, hey, I own a small excavation company. Here's the machine that I own. Here's the other machine they own. Here's this truck. Here's that. These are the type of jobs that we do. Um, I'm a solopreneur. And you just give it as much information as you can about your business and be like, can you build me a chart of accounts for QuickBooks? And it'll crank out the entire, like, hey, here's how you should structure your chart of accounts for office supplies, for truck expenses, for this, for travel, for miscellaneous expenses and <clears throat> wow and and I like that and and for a guy like you that's not very apt in quickbooks your favorite account is going to be ask your accountant <laughs> when in doubt you throw it in <laughs> ask because then he's only got this many he's only got a list of 30 things that he's got to go figure out where to categorize instead of all 500 things yeah. Right. So they love it. Like, oh, you've got all that categorized. I'll double check it. Yep. Those are all right. Okay. You didn't know where these 30 went. No problem. I'll put them away for you. I'll categorize it where they belong. Hmm. Interesting. I like that. I'll definitely have to try that. Yeah, for sure. Man, this has been a great conversation, Dylan. I appreciate you. Uh, even though you're a little sidetracked sitting in the truck i appreciate you making time and fitting us in today <laughs> i'm sitting in the, in the house and i'm just watching it rain there's cars that go by well when i first got distracted a while ago somebody was walking and splashing in the rain that's what really threw me off so <laughs> <laughs> i'm just living life to their fullest man <laughs> so i should have done this in the in the, in the house but oh. now you're all good man all good so um 
Yeah, I uh, really appreciate your time. I, I love your story. I, I think it's amazing when somebody just takes the jump. And granted, yours may have been forced by law enforcement. It's still awesome. That you're like, nope, I'm doing it. You know, it's it's pretty cool. So I wish you the best of luck in your growth, man. And um, I think you're going to be a okay. It sounds like you're already doing. You look happy. You look smiling. And, and I can't imagine what you looked like driving two hours to go drive eight hours. So yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that 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 sucks. I'm glad I'm out of that. I hope I never have to go back to that. So being self-employed is the best thing I ever did, and I hope I can stick with this. That's awesome, man. Well, guys, if you're out there and you want to have a smile like Dylan has on his face right now, and you're not sure how to do it with your excavation business, head over to groundbreakinggrowth.com, schedule a free one-on-one -on -one discovery call. It will be with no one other than myself. We can take a deep dive into your business, kind of like what Dylan and I did today, talking about QuickBooks and other areas of your business, and see if we're a good fit and we can help you grow your business. There is a 100% money-back guarantee after 90 days if you are not satisfied with my tutelage advice and assistance so groundbreakinggrowth.com head over there and schedule your free discovery call until next week guys stay dry and stay profitable take care